Patty Dunn and welcome back. We are going to now talk about shoes and embellish them. Uh, this is going to be a fun, fun show here. So let me talk to you first about how this all started. I had an, a friend that came to a class and she made a jacket. This is my twice as nice jacket, which is reversible. And she um, wore it to the style show for our American Sewing Guild group. And when she wore it, she was wearing her newly fixed up shoes. And I just went bananas. I just thought that was the coolest thing. And she had seen a Threads article. And she had, uh, and this one is uh, uh, covering the fabric with your, uh, over your shoes. And so she, she had this brown pair of shoes and it had this little um, embellishment on it. She took the embellishment off and then she made her own little flower there. And she basically did a little applique, 3D applique, and um, put a little piping on it and just did a fabulous job. I was just so, so taken with these. It was such a cute outfit that I started to look into some of the ideas for what is out there for embellishing shoes. And I ran across a lady named Margot Silk Forest. Well, let me tell you, you got a name like that, you got to be creative, right? Living up to that name, that's really a cool name. And Margot had written a book, and it's called Sassy Feet. And if you'd like to take, take a look at it, she's on the web, and she is a real cool lady. And um, she was nice enough to share some of her samples from her book with me uh, so I could show you what she does. So let's go, kind of go through some of the things that she does. And um, this shoe was originally a black shoe, and it has been turned into a pretty bright blue called Blue Caillou and it is, it, 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 we have a picture of it the way it started before and how it now looks afterwards. And she basically used a acrylic paint and she painted the, the outside of the shoe and then she put a fabric around the edge and embellished it with a little cord trim. And these are little charms that are actually uh, drawn through the, uh, the cord. So this little bit of detail has made this shoe completely different than that original black shoe. And this is the paint that she used. It has a little bit of a, a metallic feel to it. So it's nice and thick and it goes on really good because let me tell you, after seeing this, I had to try it. And in a minute, you're going to see what I did. And it's not anything like this, but it was a lot of fun. So now here is um, a shoe. She's called Letters from Home. And this was uh, a bracelet that had little charms on it. And she basically wove the bracelets through the, um, the little holes here and um, embellished, le left the little threads here. And this, this shoe was black also. And here's a picture of it the way it was. And now here's a picture of it the way it is. And look at this. She even managed to get a color on the back of the heel that's different than what it was. And then she also did, she just did a great job. Um, she did like a splatter of gold and black on the, on the base of the shoe, which I just was blown away when I saw the original picture of that. And by the way, in her book, everything that she does, she shows what the shoes looked like originally. It's very neat. Um, and so here is a dressy shoe. This is a great wedding shoe. And this was just one of those silk shoes that you buy. It's just a plain silk shoe. And then she put some trim around it, the top here. And then she added some little roses and, and a little set of rosettes on the front. And 
the back on the heel she put this little vine going up the heel isn't that just the coolest thing what a unique way to embellish shoes and so Margot has a lot of different products that she uses and you know when you've done this much and you've gone this far with it you know what works and what doesn't work and she has kind of um, pioneered the uh, the shoe industry you want to say shoe changing industry to make it so that it's easier for us now that we look at her book we know what to do and so now let me just kind of tell you what I did I went just looking in my closet to see what I had that was kind of yucky and I didn't want to ruin but I didn't want to throw away and I found this red pair of shoes and as you can see the back is all scuffed up and you know even this little spot right here is just not you know it's like oh man you got to stop wearing those shoes though then if they're so comfortable that you cannot part with them this is a great way to fix them so that you love it and get to wear it some more so what um, first of all before I go into what I did with this I want to tell you what you want to do depending on the type of shoe that you have if you have a leather shoe you want to put alcohol on it to clean it off and to take any of the surface dirt and things like that away. So get a, a high concentrate alcohol and just take a cotton ball and wipe off all of the area there so that you get any of the dust and all the, of the yucky stuff off of there. And if you have a man-made shoe, then you want to go ahead and use an acetone and this will also get off the surface stuff but it will act differently so you want to be sure that you do the right thing with the right products so that you get um, get the correct results and so what the way that you will know if something is man-made or leather it's helpful to know that is if you push your fingernail into the into the um, the leather and the leather kind of stays there that's going to be leather but if you push it in and it doesn't really make much of a mark that's probably going to be a man-made product but most of the time if you look inside the shoe it's going to tell you if it's man-made or le leather that's what they're supposed to do so now what did I do with these well instead of a brown bottom as you see I painted the bottom of this one black and I just uh, used the brush and painted around the back and look there's no more scuff look on this and then what I decided to do was go up the back seam because there was that little point that was kind of marked on both of the shoes it ended up to be marked uh, and so I just glued that on and basically that shoe is good enough to wear but there's another point um, that Margot has that if you want to uh, audition a trim which I'm sure that with this shoe right here this white shoe she probably wanted to make sure that she knew exactly where she was going to put those rosettes and how she was going to do that ahead of time so what she suggests is that you get the tape that um, is sticky and it's um, you, it, you can use either the putty that goes on the walls or you can use this tacky tape this is just a tacky tape that's that's thick and um, it's thick on both sides it's tacky on both sides and you just cut a piece of this and so what I did was I cut a piece a couple pieces of this to audition if I wanted to put something on the front of this shoe and so I just basically took a couple of little strips and stuck them down on there and and then I laid my trim which was the trim that I had on the back and I laid my trim over top of this to see if I wanted to trim the front also I'm 
not getting this to stick, but then I don't, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on this. So let's say you wanted to do some kind of fun embellishment or, you know, wiggle or swirl or something. You could, you could audition that by using the right, the right um, thing that will let you take it off before you go ahead. Because see, it's just going to fall right back off. So if you use that sticky tape, that'll let you see what it looks like before you make the decision and glue it to the shoe. Because once you glue it, it's going to be there forever and ever. This is really, really hard glue. This is glue like super glue is. And um, this is what Margo uses. It's a very, very thick. I, you know, there's other glues that I have used and I think they would probably work also, but this one is what Margo tends to use. And, um, and so once you get that on, you put your embellishment on and it's there, it's there. Now, um, I will tell you that my decision is to not put anything else on that shoe because I like it just like that with just that little bit in the back uh, um, with that black. So let's say that you wanted to put uh, something else on there like um, the first blue shoe that I showed had that fabric around the edge. Um, here's another uh, product that will help you. These are just, um, I think they're in the hardware store. They're just like little clamps right here and they're soft. They have a little plastic on them. And so when you get ready and you glue something, you can just stick it on there and hold it until you're done. Now, yes, a clothespin would work also, but a clothespin makes a little bit more of a mark than this plastic, flat plastic does. So that's, a, that's an option that you want to think about too, if you're going to put some fabric on. So I'm sure that um, when Susan put that fabric on hers, she needed something to hold that fabric in place until the glue dried. So that's really uh, something that you might want to consider uh, getting too. Okay, so what else did I do? Well, I, I, went to, um, I went to the Goodwill store and I thought, well, you know what, I'm not going to start with something that I want to keep because I'm not sure what's going to happen. So I went and I found these cute little shoes, little girls' shoes. Um, they're, they're really too small for my granddaughters, but it doesn't matter. I just wanted to play to see what would happen. And what I did was I painted them pink uh, on the sides, and I just picked different, you know, I just picked something to do, and I decided to, to, to do pink on the sides. And then I just um, ran a bead of glue around the indention of the edge, because there was lots of lines on these shoes. And then I laid these glue beads, these marbles, bead marbles, on, and they stuck to the glue, and they and they fell off of the of the shoe, uh, the ones that weren't glued. And then up on the front, I just did a little flower by just using a paintbrush and putting four little dots of glue or five little dots of glue and one in the middle and I put the beads on there also. And then I just painted this um, little stripe there. And that was just a playing, just to play and see what happens. But um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the brushes that she um, uses also because that makes a lot of difference. I thought to myself, oh boy, I'm going to try to paint an area here and not get it on anything else. I'm in trouble because I'm a messy painter. Well, these brushes really help because they're very, very straight. They have a very, very straight edge to them. And you see how they're very, very soft and they have a blunt edge. And then this fan one has a, uh, it's, I don't know, it's just a fan. I mean, it's, it's in the shape of a fan. 
but this one worked really well on the bottom, the black bottom of the shoe, the red shoe that I used. So that paintbrush is a good one to use. Now, the other thing that you want to do is you want to have a couple of things of water here. Now, I have, I have some paint and I have laid down um, a Teflon sheet because that's going to wipe up. And I'm going to just show you basically how easy it is to paint these shoes. So you're going to start out and you're going to kind of move the brush and I obviously didn't get there on the first coat. Do you see how that is? I did one coat and then if you just kind of lean up against that little trim right there, the brush goes right under. So do you see what I mean by um, you don't really need to, you, you really need that little blunt surface? Okay, so there is just one little area that I painted right there. In approximately 10 minutes, that's going to be dry. And I'll put another coat on, and then I'll put another coat on. And I want to be sure that I I do dab my brushes in. Now there's another thing that helps and that would be maybe a Q-tip that you might want to have around or you can get these little these little points um, they're called nudgers and they they're sort of they're sort of like a felt and you can take these and you can if you need to um, to get a little bit of that paint off of there you can go right up there into the little spot and it will put just enough water in there to take that off. So um, this or a Q-tip or a rag needs to go and you need to have that this uh, cup of water separated so that you don't put you put one with your paintbrush and one with maybe whatever you try to clean up with. And then the biggest key to what Margot does is her finish. Because once you put all that on, you're going to wear these shoes on the ground and they're going to be hitting different things. And you want to be sure that you, you put an acrylic uh, wash over top of it. And so Margot uses a, 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 a Pledge Futura Shine which is a, a um, acrylic, it's an acrylic floor po uh, polish type thing. Um, anything that's got an acrylic base, but this has got a wonderful, wonderful uh, liquid to it that just goes on very, very smooth. When I did this uh, pair of shoes, both of these pairs of shoes, I ended up using that, and, and the paint didn't look real great, but when I got finished with it, the paint looked even better when I put that, few, that uh, floor finish on there. And so that is what you can do with old shoes. I want to thank Margot. I want to thank Shirley, uh, Susan Shirley. And I want to thank you for joining in and making a pledge. Thank you.